Just to give you a bit of his background, he's a chief digital officer now of ABS-CBN Broadcasting Corporation. Prior to his current role, he served as chief innovation officer of McCann World Group Philippines and managing director of MRM Manila. 2011 4A's Agency of the Year for Digital Excellence and Campaign Southeast Asia Philippine Digital Agency of the Year as well. Before McCann, he was the former president and CEO of Yehe Corporation, one of the Philippines' top digital marketing holding company and also president and CEO of Media Contacts Manila, winner of 2009's Media Agency of the Year and a product of a joint venture company between Yehe and Europe's largest interactive conglomerate, Havas Digital. He holds a business management degree from Ateneo and an MBA with distinction from Murdoch University and a doctorate degree in business administration from the University of Phoenix as well. Apart from these, he has a diploma in interior decorating. Seriously, that's awesome. <laughs> I, that totally blew me away. A diploma in executive management and a diploma in hotel and restaurant management. Finally, he has Pelmanism from the Pelman Institute of Sydney, <laughs> Australia. He's currently as well teaching. He teaches e-marketing at the Graduate School of De La Salle University, advanced marketing and advanced strategic marketing for the doctoral program at the San Beda College. Uh, how much time do you have to work for us, Ned? <laughs> he was president of the Philippine Marketing Association as well, founding president of IMAP, currently sits on the board of governors for the Management Association of the Philippines and was a past board of director of the Manila Junior Chamber, Finally, he serves as Board of Trustee of Operation SMILE, a nonprofit volunteer service organization that provides free reconstructive facial surgery for children with cleft lips. And as we said, his current challenge now, his newest role, is as the Chief Digital Officer for ABS CBN. Please welcome Mr. Donald Lim. Okay, thank you, TJ. Uh, so for my presentation, welcome everyone. For my presentation this afternoon, as usual, they don't invite me every year because I tend to be a bit controversial. And I always challenge the board that when we do conferences like this, the intent is to really push the envelope and the thinking. And, and that, I hope, is something that you are able to get in the past, for the past two days. So they gave me this uh, topic this uh, last Monday. I'm going to talk about digital PR. And I said, it's, it's okay, but I want to step back and, and, and rethink the, the entire, I was looking at the theme. And I said, I would like to play around with the theme without not touching digital PR. So. As you know, I'm the founding president. You cannot debate with me. I changed my topic. <laughs> so I changed my topic, but I will touch PR. So the PR, for the PR people here, huh? and we can discuss PR later on also. No? But because the topic is all about ROI, I want to tackle fact or fiction. Right? Uh, ROI from digital is it fact or fiction? Currently, and uh, I've been working with, I, I've worked with Makan for the past three years and working with the, the, the Coca-Colas of the world, Unilever, Nestle, among others. And we've seen that digital marketing spending is already moving up, but everyone is still cautious. Right? Old ways die hard. The chief marketing directors are still very cautious of spending digital. What we've also seen is that fans are not enough. So we've, 2010 was all about fan acquisition. 2012, 2013 was Tamana, right? We don't, what, what are fans for? So fans are not enough, so would be any other metric. And the CXOs, the chief officers of our companies, want to go digital. We've seen, I've sat through so many, I've sat through so many planning sessions, right? All of them said, let's go digital. From banks to FMCGs to, every, to everything. And yet, when you ask them, okay, what do we want to do? Uh, we don't know, right? So they don't know what to do, nor they want to implement anything without concrete proof. And that is fair. And we've seen there are various learning that, that we have in digital marketing. Marketing has been pushing the digital agenda like never before, and growth has been tremendous. Um, the, our marketing departments have been saying, let's try, let's experiment with digital and all of that. Right? And growth has been tremendous. I think our industry has been growing uh, double, close to triple di digits every year. And creativity can make digital marketing sexy and win awards, but far and few really get to the, to the results the CEO wants. 
we've had our fair share of awards um, um, in the region and globally, and we're proud of that. IMAP was created to compete with uh, to, to to compete with the global giants, to to compete with marketing people, to ensure that global Filipinos know and, and know how to use digital if needed. And the last bullet is what I said, no. In the end, after, and I'm seven years in digital, I came from the Inquirer, the oldest newspaper, I moved to digital, you know, with Yehe, then with Makan, and then now with ABS. And right now I can say that there is no business ROI in digital marketing. Right? And that is my conclusion, and that is my learning, given the way we interpret ROI. So again, if you want to tweet what I said, you have to include the parentheses, or else I get, the IMAP board will, will, <laughs> will get mad at me. There is no business ROI in digital marketing, given the way we interpret ROI. ROI, I presented to the heads of Unilever's, and they want me to create a Facebook campaign that would drive sales, which is hard. Because how we interpret ROI has always been about sales. right? So we have to understand first the role of digital. How, what is really the role of digital in the entire marketing mix? You know, I'm lucky enough to have sat through, well, created the first IMAP Summit, first few years I was talking there. And, you know, IMAP Summit 1 up to IMAP Summit 6, always have one thing that we, we always talk about, ROI. And it's very interesting because now in IMAP Summit 7, it is still ROI. Right? So apparently, all of you were not satisfied, or you did not learn anything from the IMAP 1 to 6. I don't know, and why you are all here. Or for some reason, we haven't cracked that. Right? And maybe so, because like I said, it's not how we interpret ROI. How we look at ROI, if we're going to put it directly into sales, it's going to be a very big question. Right? Because all the moves that we're, that we're making addresses a certain um, addresses a certain metric, and it's not necessarily sales. In many cases, far from sales. If we keep on tying a digital, uh, a digital campaign or an activity that we do to sales, it's going to be very hard. And I'll, uh, and I'll show that to you later on. In fact, in digital, we were we were discussing, uh, parang there are soft ROIs and hard ROIs, and in, in essence, I mean, do they really make sense? Right? What are soft and hard <laughs> ROIs? And I'm not alone there. Uh, so the, uh, Richard Binhammer, who is the, the head of a uh, strategic core com of Dell, said there's no single ROI for social media. Because in many cases, if you look at, if you look at uh, what we've been doing, we're talking about a social media metric. Anything that we do addresses, well, we create a social media metric and we measure that. However, we always jump to the business objective. We, always, we want to make sure that we, social media metric addresses a business metric and in turn addresses a business objective. So if you read through this, no? uh, some metrics are activity-based, such as fans, likes, and shares. We all know how to acquire that already. While others are result-based, such as conversions. While both have value, the key is that every social media metric should tie to a business metric, which should map to a business goal. There is a relationship between a corporate objective, a supporting business unit metric, and a social media metric. The key, however, is to distinguish causation from correlation. You can do all of these things, but you can only correlate. You cannot cause. Many of us wanted to cause that if we have so many fans, it will cost an increase in sales. You have to understand the difference. Whatever all of you are doing, we, when you study it, try to correlate it rather than cause. Because a cause is a cause and effect. It means you do this, this something will happen. Right? I only need to bring all of this up, and I will, again, push with this thesis, uh, as I, and you can debate with me later on. Right? It's only because I feel that as, as a community, we've done so many things already, but this ROI thing is holding us back. So we have to find a way, all of you, and, and hopefully this, this presentation helps you convince your bosses, your clients, whoever, that I mean, uh, let's not push digital marketing efforts to straight ROI, straight sales. Because if you look at if you look at the metrics that we measure every time, I mean, those are all the measures that I can think of, and you can add more, right? But in the end, saan dito? How many of these can you say that they have a relation to ROI? Right. If you can. You can tell me later, and we'll have you here give that talk because 
I don't know if anyone in the industry can really, can really stretch that, no? can really prove that. We've seen the evolution that when you talk about website analytics, we've moved from hits, visits, paths, conversions, and rightfully so, we've been, and like a previous speaker, he's already looking at conversions, no? and that happened only, what, two, three years ago at, at, at most. We're trying to look at uh, how a website visit can convert to sales, but when social came in, we, look, we began to look at different metrics, right? Interactions, involvement, intimacy, and influence, and I'll take you through that later on. So with the debate on ROI, with the mandate towards ROI, right, what I would recommend is that when you line up different activities, you know, whether it's a video posted, tweets, or online media served, we are actually initiating a response. Right? And this response, we can correlate to a business outcome. So you have to present, the, you have to present all your activities in such a way that these are what you are doing, Right? But you have to try to correlate this with this. If you're trying to correlate activities with business outcome, then yung tawid mas mahirap. You can't, it's harder to defend. That's why you have to make it a process. Right? From activities to what is the desired response of that activity and use that activity to see if you can correlate that right, to a business outcome. If you're going to use just an activity and try to correlate to a business outcome, then uh, it's going to be very hard. Right? And so with that, uh, one of the biggest challenges that, that I've seen why we can't make that jump, right? Why we are still struggling with, uh, you know, why, why a lot of CEOs are still asking about how effective is digital, how do we do digital. In my experience with so many, many, many companies, many multinationals that I've worked with, big companies, small companies here, I began to see a pattern. And then uh, I began to realize that most of the companies today, they are in different stages of maturity. In IMAP 1 and IMAP 2, Summit 1 and 2, we were all novices. We were trying to, to work around, help each other, how do, you, how do we play in digital? Right? Today, some are more advanced, some are still behind. So what I, what I did was I actually created, you know, I, I, I did the term digital maturity model. And we have to, if you're an agency, you have to analyze first where your client is. And I'll give you an example later on. But for me, when I analyze different companies today, I can say that they are in four stages. The first is, at the fun is a fundamental stage, where their digital state is still experimental. These companies, they still have brochure sites, and, 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 and uh, which are... The website is more billboard in nature, for, and it's just for presence. Their assets, when you, analyze it, when you analyze them, they have a website and a Facebook account. Their focus is just to create a web architecture content and Facebook posting. Their KPIs, if you ask them what are their KPIs, they would tell you just traffic related, how many page views, uniques, and likes. And in many cases, the lead here would be the creative and the programmer, right? Now, we've seen most of the companies, most of the Filipino companies, and most of the chief marketing officers have moved towards this level already, where it's more tactical. No? I, I term it the marketing phase. The digital presence is now used for sales and marketing. They now have a website in Facebook, and sometimes they use Twitter, or sometimes they use some mobile executions. They now have a web architecture and a social, me uh, media, playbook, uh, social media playbook in play, and they do social publishing. So when they, when, if you look at Facebook today and analyze all the brands, you know who are, who are at this stage and who are still at the experimental phase. Their KPRs would be deeper digital metrics, and they usually tie it to marketing results. So it's more on the rates, conversion rates, click-through rates, more at that level already. And in many cases, which is so, because now the marketing officer has taken the lead here. In the third phase, we saw that uh, and, and only very few companies are at this stage integrated, which is what I call a digital synergy phase, that digital assets are now integrated with each other. So their website, Facebook, and all other assets are tied into each other. The, they now have website, they have a social and a mobile platform. So the three are present. They have a digital architecture and a content architecture in play, meaning that for their content is not copy-pasted in their website, Facebook, Twitter, and all other pages. They know how to use content already. And they have cross-digital channel analytics. So from one channel to the other, they know how to, which leads to the other, right? And they have business objectives, so open and conversion rates. And why is that so? Because the senior organizational leader who is not a techie is now in, in charge. 
And we move to the, what, I, what I feel is the highest level, which is the optimized phase. So we, I termed it customer synergy phase. At this stage, the mindset of the corporation, the mindset of the company, uh, they look at digital assets as, as agnostic. The customer takes the lead. It means that they are confident enough and secure enough to say, we don't, if, our, if our supposedly clients do not, are, don't have, they don't go to our website, then we won't create a website. We create the, uh, the platform depending on the customer, depending on the client. If they are on Facebook, we go to Facebook immediately. So for products, for brands, for others. And uh, their platforms are now consumer-led. They already apply CRM and analytics. They drive the dynamic online and offline integrations, and they already use social CRM. So with, for example, they would know that for every, for if someone posted on Facebook, they would know that person is a customer or not. Are they a regular complainer or not? They're able to, to tie in already with CRM. But if they're complaining, is, is this person buying, I say, the regular customer or not? So they're able to analyze that up to that level already. So they now have cross-digital channel and multi-platform analytics with customer data aligned with business results, and it's now very much boardroom-led. If you look at the boardroom, sales, marketing, every department has a stake in digital. In many cases, I can, I can sense that all of us are stuck at this level. No? So all, all, all of us are stuck are at this level, and we find it hard to jump to the next phase. Only because now we cannot prove it because of this theme, ROI. We cannot prove it to the board why we need to invest. Right? In many cases, investments would be, would be the, biggest, uh, the biggest hurdle. Uh, cloud, mobile, data, all of these. Right? And if you tell your board, uh, we need to invest, let's say, 5 million, 10 million, which is an old number for data analytics, CRM, they would say, what's that, right? How can you prove ROI? Then you go back to the ROI discussion again, right? So if we look at the digital maturity, in many cases for agencies, and this is one of my learning, I came from MRM, we're a CRM company, right? We're a CRM company, which is, when I went into C MRM, in my first few months, uh, I was not able to win any pitch, only because we are selling CRM. CRM is around here already. Most of the companies are at this stage that time. That's why, if you, look at, if you look at MRM today, we don't do CRM because many of the Filipino companies are still here. You cannot sell CRM today, today, even today, right, without ensuring that your customers have moved already, the, have, have moved the needle from their ma digital maturity. If they are not mature, you have to talk their language, right? So if, if your customers are telling them, are, are telling you, uh, uh, my metric is website and fans and so many things. Then you already have an idea, okay, so medyo, uh, they're still at the experimental phase. You cannot go in there, which is what I did before. Oh, we have to do CRM. That's the perfect, that's the best place to be. You have to know how to profile. And there's nothing wrong there, but you won't get a sale. They won't understand and they won't put money. For agencies, you have, or even suppliers, you have to guide your clients through that process, right? So even if you're at this last part, that's fine, and that's good, right? Because if you understand CRM and analytics, that's, what, that's okay. But you have to if you understand first where your customers are, right? Talk their language and guide them through the process, okay? Because digital is not, it's not just only Facebook or Twitter. It is now, it is now what I call a, a, tool, a, a, a toolbox with so many tools inside it. So it's very hard to, to just use like the hammer, which is like, let's say, a website or your Facebook, and say this is the only tool you will be using, because it's not. So therefore, if we're going to look at, look at this from the maturity, uh, from, the, from the maturity on how mature they are in digital, how do we make them move faster? So what I was thinking was, let's talk about engagement. Remember the, the, the jump? Let's talk about en engagement first, because it is easier to prove engagement towards, uh, towards a business outcome. So. Now, I, I just quickly termed this the four eyes, uh, so it's easier to remember. Um, the four levels of digital engagement. engagement. So when, was, when I was analyzing, and to think with, with my MRM team, some of you are here, I mean, we manage close to six million, I think six million fans. We manage a, a Nescafe two million. We manage some who are at 20,000, right? And we, we manage in total around 40. And we began to see certain, um, certain facts, certain uh, levels of engagement for, 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 every, uh, for every Facebook page. 
The first is involvement. The involvement means that they just, uh, it's mere presence, right? So they just like, they, it reflects the measurable aspect of an individual's relationship. And this includes the volume of traffic, page views, time spent, and it is the measure if a person is present. They're involved and they are just there. And the second is actually the like. When they interact with you, then this provides depth of that involvement alone lacks. So it's more measurable because you can now look at people, uh, what uh, people do while present at these touch points. This component addresses the more robust actions people take. Uh, so basically this is uh, interaction. The third is all about intimacy. It means that after interacting with you, and many of us again stop at that level, um, nag like na, right? But how are they engaging? No? In two summits ago, I was talking about the, the measure of Facebook has never been the number of fans, but about the engagement rate, right? And it's all about intimacy. It measures the affinity and the affection, the sentiment that an individual holds or exhibits for the brand product or even the unbranded experience. So we see how intimate they are, how often they come to your Facebook page, how often they come to your website. And finally, what all of us want is that hopefully, in reality, if you have real fans, they would be your greatest influencer, they would be your greatest advocates. Influence look beyond affin affinity, not beyond like and engaging with you. This is the measur measurable act of a person sharing their brand experience with others. And this component determines an individual's likelihood to encourage a fellow customer, community member, to consider the use of the brand. And, and with my, with, uh, my MRM team previously, we're, we're able to categorize also how many of our fans who are there are there just for being involved or being inter, um, uh, interactive with us and those who are, re are re real influencers. Um, and we capture them. We know who they are. We know they're the ones who perennially uh, go to our Facebook page. They re engage with us to a point that when we had our two million fans, they, we didn't even tell them to, to, to be in a brand color. They came to MOA in that big event in a sea of red, right? And, and we didn't even tell them to wear red. I mean, they're real advocates. And I forgot to wear red. I mean, black, no? So, ganun pa rin. Okay. So, how do we interlay? Right, the four levels of uh, engagement with the digital maturity is that as we move towards maturity, as we move towards maturity here, no, from fundamental to tactical, uh, we're also creating our different assets. But at the same time, we also have to measure the level of engagement as we move towards maturity. Okay, so I won't go through this in detail. But what I'm saying is that, in, in the very least, when you look at the digital maturity model. You have to be helping your clients move from one to the next. Because if you stick with them and say, okay, we will help you, we will help you get to 100,000 fans. The next year would be 200,000 fans. And then the next year is 300,000. That's it. Then, then they would, in the end, be very frustrated. So what, what then? Right? When we reach 2 million fans for Nescafe, the, big, the next question was not, when's the next 2 million? It's not, okay, so how, what do we do with all of them? So they have to move. Right? The metrics have to change, right? You, because they've reached a certain level of maturity already. So how do we move towards digital maturity? I'm, my, my, uh, my proposition is that to make it simple. Let's try to have quick wins, right? And gone are the days where, and I will t take you through the three bullets very quickly, right? Gone are the days where we have digital only executions. Online would have to integrate with offline. In many cases, even when I was with the agency, the first thing we ask if someone um, wants to do a campaign is, okay, I want a digital campaign, and I will tell them, digital campaign means digital-led, but you have to have an offline execution. So even the mandate for our creative, even the mandate for our backend and everyone is, what is the offline? Magkailangan may plus one. Digital plus one. Because then, mas ma feel ang ROI. It must, it's easier to sell. If you're going to sell purely digital, there's, there's nothing wrong. I mean, our previous speaker said, you can look at the conversions, websites. I mean, th those, are, those are good. Those are correct. Right? But if you want the board level to appreciate digital, you have to look for that plus one. This, I'll show you an example. I like this example. It's so simple. Right? And I don't know if, I, if some of you have seen this already, but this is with Golf News. Uh, golf News. They want, to, they want to drive traffic to their website, right? But instead of uh, doing ads, they actually took a different route. They tied up with a coffee shop, right? And I'll let the video tell the story.
Gulf News, UAE's leading newspaper, asks us to help them reach even more readers and convert them into subscribers. Since fresh news goes well with fresh coffee, we adapted the coffee cup sleeve into an advertising medium, and we created the Headline News Cup Sleeve. In partnership with Tim Hortons, a global coffee chain, we designed a special news printer, which pulled out breaking news tweets from the Gulf News Twitter account and printed them on the custom-made coffee cup sleeve. The tweets were updated hourly, so everyone could enjoy fresh news with their freshly brewed Tim Hortons coffee. Every hour, every day. It's about uh, adding uh, a value to the guests who are coming in. Uh, it's about uh, letting the guests feel, uh, get not just a fresh coffee, but get to know the news all across the globe uh, as and when it happens, right there on the coffee screens. Until now, around 1,400 headline tweets have been printed on over 800,000 coffee cups. We recorded more than 2,900 new Gulf News followers and the traffic on the Gulf News website grew by 41%, subscriptions up by 2.8% so far. Now, in Tim Hortons outlets across the UAE, this project will be rolled out in 14 new outlets soon to be opened. Gulf News, best enjoyed with coffee. So if you look at their execution, it's very simple, right? Um, they just updated the coffee cups, leave some, a, a, an item that no one really takes a look at, and they just find a very nice space and they just updated it. They, they tied up with uh, Tim Horton, and technically just, what's the cost? Just the small machine, right? So executions like these are, are very simple to do, and, and, and in fact, I always, tell, I always tell people, digital, in, 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 in essence, should be about making marketing simpler, not more complex. The time that if you start looking at so many jargons and you don't understand, then I think digital has failed. Why is that? That's important eh? because when you talk to the boardrooms, your CEOs, you, you cannot g sell jargon and that is the reality. You have to talk in very simple terms to them. I'll show you another example. I like this. Uh, this is uh, The Personal Road uh, by Coke Israel. Uh, I don't know if you've seen that uh, um, Coke previously uh, did a, you know, they, they changed the Coke logo to the names of people in Australia. And this was another extended execution, right? And now this is with the uh, outdoor. Coca-Cola Israel joined the global campaign in which people could purchase personalized cans and bottles with their names on it. Building on this great idea, we decided to take it even a step further by also creating a personalized road that will greet our consumers as they approach in the same personalized way consumers found their names on Coca-Cola bottles and cans. So how did we do it? We transformed the country's main billboards into remote interactive billboards. Consumers were invited to enter their names just once via a special Coca-Cola smartphone app. The location-based app was able to identify the consumers as they approached the billboard and transmitted their names automatically to the billboards. Using Geofence technology, Whenever a consumer approached the billboard, they received a message notifying them that their name was up there. The app ranked number one in Israel's App Store as of day one and kept that position throughout the entire campaign period with a total of 100,000 downloads. So again, we are seeing another different execution, geofencing, uh, technology, um, aligning mobile um, um, with, with outdoor. Right? Again, this is something very easy to execute, but I'm sure if your CEO would see their name there, he'd also be excited with digital, right? So what I'm saying is that, again, now before I move to number two, uh, try to think of the plus one, and that's my challenge to all of you in digital. Digital alone, it's fine. I mean, we, we, we've had our run, we, we, we enjoyed creating Facebook pages, apps, and so many other things. But if you can do a plus one, whether you integrate with TV, with radio, with print, outdoor, billboard, then it would push digital further. It would actually help digital further. The second is all about digital reputation, which actually now prompts digital and real world action. So this was my topic you know, in PR. <laughs> you know, so, so it's still there. <laughs> We've seen the evolution also of, uh, of uh, PR, from CEOs tweeting to so many other things. No? This was, again, if you still don't know this, Kenneth Cole tweeted during the 
Egypt uh, uprising, millions are in uproar in Cairo. Rumors they heard a new spring collection is now available online. And of course, people got mad. And he had to apologize the next day. I apologize to everyone who was offended by my insensitive tweet about the situation in Egypt. I dedicated my life to raising awareness about serious issues. And in hindsight, my attempt at humor regarding a nation liberating themselves against oppression was poorly timed and absolutely inappropriate. And the response, don't read it. But you get you know response like that. We've also seen, for example, the the photo of uh, when Pacquiao went down, right? And Justin Bieber, you know, uh, sent this photo around the world. And interesting, uh, a lot of people actually defended Pacquiao. No, uh, many making fun of someone who got knocked out ain't funny. You don't know how to respect. And then the last tweet was, "Wow, lost respect for Justin Bieber." So immature, can't you at least have some respect for Pacquiao, right? Even if it's a joke, it's not funny. And more interesting was that he responded. No, uh, Justin said, uh, here, no? If they were believers, I know they wouldn't leave my side over a boxing opinion I have. Right? So people got more mad, right? <laughs> to a point that I think uh, our Senate or Congress tried, tried to... To, to make him a persona non grata in the Philippines, right? I don't know if you've seen that. You've seen also this, fa this favorite, right? Uh, so during, and um, I live across Frostburg, Bard, so that was destroyed. DPWH said, our officials are now there inspecting, right? And eventually only need one person, only one person, graphic artist pa na, na blogger, to say, wait a minute, you just photoshopped yourself there, and and because this went up to the website, they were claiming that they were inspecting. So now some the artist, the graphic designer, come blogger said, you know, why is he like floating? Why is the leg shorter? Why is his hair photoshopped? And why are there red, the two red and black people at the back? So it's just too obvious, right? So now you cannot, you know, can get away if you want to do things like that. And therefore prompted the, the, the uh, what, what happened here was after the next day, and I was reading in a blog, so don't take my word for it, but I was reading the blog, the DPWH um, issued an apology. Uh, they said, uh, our graphic designer is just being playful. Uh, we have fired him already. Of course, that apology, many people did not, you know, didn't like it. So they said, okay, we're, we accept your apology, but we're not done with you yet. Thus creating the DPWH meme, where they said, if you, if you want to teleport, <laughs> if you want to teleport, I will help you teleport. <laughs> so now, you are at the Parthenon. And then we'll put you in the Plants vs. Zombies. You're now with Obama, in Simpsons, among many other places. Again, the power of the internet can work for you or against you. Right? So again, the DPWH meme. If you type in DPWH meme, you'll get 10 pages with all of these pictures. Uh, this, um, I like showing this only as for learning. And, and I like how Globe executed this. Um, page of Globe, during the time that they were having a hard time with Signal. So instead of all of you calling them, they launched a Twitter account, Page of Globe. And Page of Globe was created so that if you have any issues, any, any concerns with Signal, you can just tweet him, right? Now, Page of Globe was created, and he was doing very well, no? Every time you tweet him, he will respond to you. So, sabi ko, I'm hands off, galing, no? The, the problem is that, okay, if you take a look, I'll go back one slide, right? Ano ang, ano niya? At Page of Globe, right? But then, a lot of people got mad at Globe for, for that, for when, when they didn't have good Signal that time. So someone created at Page Globe to confuse people. So what would you do, right, from a PR standpoint? What's happening kasi, no, is that, for example, if you read this third one, right, I tweeted to P at Page of Globe, then this Page Globe replied, that is a correction, I'm worried about my bill now because he sent him all the data, the number and the account information. So things like that, how do you address that, right? So, so certain measures have to be in place you know, when, you, when you handle PR. Um, 
Next, oh, this is again, I think I like how this was executed and how this was handled from a PR standpoint. Our, our friends from Sky Cable, well, my sister company. If you're not familiar with this, uh, someone posted on Facebook, tweeted, did everything. You know? My female friend is now critical, cable guy from Sky, servicing her home tried to rape her. She was stabbed multiple times, happened yesterday. Same cable guy who serviced her home a while ago. Good thing she was able to hide her phone under bed, she was able to call for help, right? So actually massive negative PR for any company. And 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 we were we were working with Sky Cable that time as MRM when we, we said, okay, let's analyze first who was this person. Uh, Eric Gonzalez. So when you analyze when we were analyzing how what impact can she can he make, you know, we said that he has only three hundred forty two followers, not enough to create a viral impact. So it's fine. No? So when we analyze uh, PR, we look at the influence of the person being the, the number one determinant, no? so if it will become viral or not. But he was intelligent. And then you don't have a computation for that because what he did was he tweeted GMA, Miss Leia, at Karen Davila, MDA, at Ogi Diaz, and many others. Right? Which is, okay, now it's, it will become viral because now all the big celebrities are, 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 are aware of it. No? Uh, this case didn't explode, and it was handled very well by, by Sky. Um, HR, the head of HR, came in, responded, visited the, the patient, um, also helped in, in issuing out details about the person. So I don't know if you caught, if you caught it on the news. The person, um, the alleged person, was actually caught after three days. So it was in prison. So he was you know, put to jail. Right. So again, everything due to social, right? Can work for you, can work against you, but you have to know how to manage, how to how to go around it, no? And then we were analyzing even, like we said, no, yung, yung the word clouds, uh, the listening tools that we employ, we were able to know if it would become big or not. Uh, just very interesting, uh, in, we were also looking at how big is the effect of uh, social media to elections, no? Um, we were we we had this tool on our website during the during halalan. If social media were to become the predictor of who will be in the Senate or or who will win in the elections, this would have been our top twelve. Right? You will have Binay being number one, Montiveros, Gordon, uh, Po, Aquino, Angara, the top six. If right, if the number of mentions were to determine. Of course, it didn't. Right? So I was saying I want to analyze further no? and analyze what happened. So pardon me for this. I just screenshot my Excel file. What, we did, what I did here, okay, for you to understand, this would be the number of votes that they had. Okay? Number of votes. Then I looked at, if you look at here, how many Facebook fans do they have, Twitter followers, and how many number of mentions. If you go through the correlation, again, correlation, not causation, correlation, Facebook is just at 0.38. Acceptable in statistics and research, 0.8 above, which would be a high correlation, right? 0.38, right? Uh, Twitter, 0 0.15, 0 0.12, meaning there's no correlation, right? Interesting because I was hoping that Facebook followers would determine, hope I, at, at the very least, may contain, but none, no? Uh, the number one who had the most number of uh, fans was actually Legarda. But when I analyzed this, he was, she was actually, she got a lot of uh, sandbag from her uh, vice president run. She was able to get a lot of fans already. So this just added to it. Then I also tried to analyze Sana if Twitter would did help determine the election. So, sino nandito? 121 was Escudero, si Cheese. So when we analyzed the tweets, it was all about heart. So, wala ulit, no? no correlation. Then we analyzed the number of mentions. The most number of mentions is Binay. I'm sure all of you were mad at her for some weird reason. And you're right, no correlation. Because if you look at it, the negative is 80% negative. Right. So again, that's what we say, no? Is there a social media vote today? Not yet. They are, social media is an indicator not, you know, it's indicative, not predictive. Okay. And so as well as with the, so I just ran this through Topsy very quickly. The last uh, 
Luneta, I don't know how many of you were there, but if you look at it, the comment, no, not, it's not high. I don't know if you're happy or frustrated with, with the million people march. I mean, there's no one million there. Right? Because it was the middle class, all the taxpayers, all of you. Because I was analyzing. The rich, their taxes, they don't feel it. They're rich. Yeah? The poor, they're poor, they don't pay tax. All of you in the middle class, ah, <laughs> you're the ones who are complaining, right? Because your 30% is the one being charged. And that's why if you go to Luneta, and my feedback from a lot of people, they live across Luneta, I, I peered there uh, and went around for a bit, but you know, it's all English speaking. The Masa is not there. Same way how Binay was able to win, even if all, everyone on Facebook lambasted her. Right? In fact, if you analyze how Bina did it, how Binay did it, when she was getting attacked online, she, used, she was able to use it as a tool. Oh, ina attack ako ng mga elite, you have to help me. Right? And she got the popular votes again. Right? So, all of these things um, are clear telling us. Right? And in fact, if you look at all of these numbers, going back to ROI, wala naman eh. Right? But it doesn't, then it shouldn't stop. If you're running for office, for example, saying that you shouldn't go to Facebook, you shouldn't do digital. You know you should. But again, you have to be able to, if you have a boss, if you're bored, you have to be able to convince them. Use, if it's just fans or, or, or Twitter followers, mahirap yung tawid, right? You can't cross that, that big chasm when explaining uh, ROI. Uh, okay, uh, I put it, nilagay ko pala to. You're familiar with this issue also. I'll just go through this quickly. When we were analyzing this also, we were, we were uh, using a tool. Uh, this was the day that uh, Vice had, an, had a concert in Araneta. Right? Then it died down. And then the negative thing came up. Right? So the big question was, what should Vice do? And then there, we were able to say that her fans actually defended her. So the green is positive, red is negative. So the fans actually defended her and it got more positive mentions. So there we were, we were able to tell her, don't do anything anymore, right? If, if the positive were less than red and the red would, the negative would still be coming out, then you have to act. Here, it already told us, don't, don't do anything. You're, you're okay, you're covered. And then the next mentions after a few days was someone had a kaloka like ni vice, right? So that was all the positive mentions as people forgot about the issue, no? But what was good about our tracking tool was that we were able to know who talked about it. We were able to see who influenced, who are the ones when they tweeted, we were able to get more people to retweet among, among others, no? Uh, and, and when I was presenting to Vice, she, you know, he, she, um, he was, uh, he was, he was uh, surprised that some of like her, her his friends would, would, uh, akala niya friend niya, you know, then negative bala. So captured lahat. I mean, everything was captured. You know. So it's very interesting. Okay. Um, and then if you look at PR, just have to understand, no? size, sentiment, potential in fact, and you have the influencer ratings. So what we did was we look at, uh, are there a large number of conversations on the topic? How many are, are they passive or negative? What is the potential impact? Um, and finally, um, how influential are the influencers there? Okay, so I won't go through this. So again, uh, oh yeah, I have one more, okay. So that's on the PR side, right? We're seeing a lot of moves to already from uh, the online reputation is already prompting a lot of uh, digital and real world action. The third is about online sales. And again, people always ask, no? I mean, e-commerce hasn't, it's, it's, it's so, so here. I mean, it's still, it's still a very small chunk of the market. Um, and, and that's why I was telling people, you won't, you won't get a lot of um, success there. You're, we won't be earning millions and millions. Unless even the highest e-commerce stores are still at a certain level, a few hundred millions. For you as brands or even as agencies, when you recommend that, it's not going to, it's not yet. Eh, no? So it has to be redefined from digital sales to using digital to up the selling experience. So use digital to enhance the experience rather than forcing sales in the process. No? Now I can show you Hointer, you can, you can check them out, Hointer. 
No, but I, I think I have time, so I'll just roll the video. This is five minutes, but I like them. this uh, one of my favorite executions. Uh, you can check out Hointer, no? H O I N T E R. Um, but I like this video, and look at how they how they try to se to sell offline store and then online. Their online execution is mobile, and I won't show the entire video. Just I'll cut it somewhere, no? But just to get the message across. Hi, I'm Jonathan Sposato. I'm the chairman of GeekWire, and this is how I typically buy jeans. Look at all this here. I've got straight, regular waist. Let's see, we're relaxed, low waist. Hmm. Or do I want boot cut? Wait a second. Where's my size? Let's see. Well, I can't find my size here. And these are kind of out of order. Wait a minute. I'm confused. Am I even in the right section? Okay. All right. There has got to be a better way. I've been told that there's a revolutionary new shopping experience going on here, just right here in the U District. It's called Hointer, and it's for all the guys who actually hate to shop. Now, ironically, now come follow me. Now, ironically, I actually love to shop, so I don't know if that makes me a good candidate for this test or a bad candidate, but uh, I'm told that this is pretty amazing, that this is a new way uh, for me to buy jeans, in this case, at the Hointer store, and uh, I'm going to show you how that's done. Walking in, and here's a store. Wow, immediately I'm hit with a bunch of jeans. I can see what's going on here, the different finishes, the different brands. I can see different pockets. Wow, this is great. And, uh, and I believe I have to download an app for this. So let me just actually take out my phone. And uh, oh, here it is. I already have it. I'm going to go ahead and scan. All right, let's do this. This looks good, right here. There it is, it's scanned. And then I'm gonna hit that I want this size. And I'm gonna go ahead and try it on. And it's gonna be in fitting room number three. Let's go to fitting room number three. Fitting room number three. Those are the very pants that I just scanned in, in the size that I selected. That's amazing. Okay, now if you can give me a moment, I'll try these on. I would, uh, <coughs> I would, I would be ready to buy these. The most amazing moment was when you walked into the hotel's in the fitting room, yeah. and they're there. They're there. Well, I actually had a pretty fantastic experience. I was skeptical at first because I'm actually the kind of guy that enjoys uh, sort of meandering around a big comfy store that's softly carpeted with piano music playing. Maybe somebody comes over and serves me a glass of scotch. That's actually happened. Uh, but this was really amazing because it exceeded my expectations in terms of how quickly I got the items that I wanted. It almost felt like a magical moment when I scanned the items. Uh, those were the items I wanted. And then when I was ready to, when I hit the button try on on the application, it directed me to a dressing room and automatically the clothes were already there and no fuss, no muss. I try them on. Uh, I could buy them right there. When I returned the items, it disappeared from my cart. Um, uh, pretty uh, paradigm shifting, actually, in a lot of ways, both for the customer and then also for the um, uh, sort of the economics of the store itself in terms of labor costs, shelf, product stocking, uh, those kinds of things. My name is Nadia, and I'm a... Okay, so I'll cut it. But this is the... She's one of the, the, one of the founding directors of Amazon. And, and during the interview, she said... Yeah, Amazon experience, Amazon thinking applied to our retail, right? So you want all the way, yung, the selling process uh, has to have a bit of still online. No? Uh, and again, what he said, no? it's an amazing experience. But in reality, if you look at it, it's so simple. <laughs> App lang, QR code, you have the pants there. What's so amazing? But it's still, right? it's still amazing to, to, to him. No? And, and it was able to get a lot of Hointer. Uh, Hointer was able to get a lot of uh, um, 
you know, uh, talk equity, people were, were talking about the retail store because it's just so different, right? So, uh, just to, to wrap up, you know, okay, so I have two minutes. Uh, you have to, again, to move towards digital maturity, you have to, when you analyze ROI, you might not get there today. You might not, you might not be able to show ROI immediately. But it doesn't mean that you should not attempt. You should not experiment. You should not um, um, uh, go into digital only because ROI is stopping you. Um, and you can have quick wins when, and, and you can easily sell your, your ideas and concepts if you, for one, integrate with offline. You can analyze reputation if you can save your company if they are undergoing negative um, reputation online. It's, it's now easier because now we have a lot of tools to track. And, and finally, if you analyze it, if you want to push sales, don't be focused on just the sale in the peso, but try to look at the experience that you can create using technology. And that would help you push sales. Okay? So with that, again, uh, just to summarize, to make, that, to make that jump, you analyze first your engagement. Where are you really? Right? If you analyze all your customers, are they just involved? Are they interacting with you? Are they intimate with you? Or are they already influencing um, the others in, in, in liking, in, in really patronizing your brand? And again, as a reminder, look at, look at analyze first the state. Whether, and these are, when I, when I worked on this, I look at it from a different company standpoint. But it could be also from a management standpoint. If your board, if your management, if your CEO, if your chief marketing head is still at an experimental phase, um, you cannot, don't, don't sell them CRM, analytics, so many other tools. When it's hard for them to grasp, you have to, and, and because for the past three years with Mike Smith and Makan and even with Yehe before, whatever success we had was because we, te we tell our clients we will handhold you and we will walk with you every step of the way and we get small quick wins uh, uh, right there, right? And, and then we begin to grow the pie, we begin to experiment. You have to give them a certain level of confidence, right? Because again, digital, if you, some of you who are not really techy here, who are not in digital, who's here for the first time, I mean, welcome, but you know, it's not, it shouldn't be, it shouldn't be all techy. I'm not a techy any, also, right? So move, help them, help your clients, and your clients can be, can be the brands, can be, the, can be your boss, move from one to the other, but, but you have to understand first where they are. Okay, uh, this digital, by the way, uh, this uh, framework uh, is coming. Uh, um, Adobe will also feature this in the digital showcase. I hadn't, I'll, I haven't wrote the article, but I'll write an article. I can put it there also, so you can put it there. But uh, Sharon and Angel asked me to to write something about this, so you can find it there also, just in case, if you want to know more about this. Okay, so thank you, and um, I'll open maybe the floor for a few questions. All right, Donald Lim, have a seat. One of our new Capabillas. Let's talk about interior design. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Which I'm sure this was your choice. Oh. Black and the red chairs. Yes. Okay. Any questions out there? It's rare that we have a chance to have the man here, one of the, f the not one of the, the founding president yep. by map. Thank you. <laughs> okay, I'll warm him up. Okay, um, well. You jumped two topics because one you insisted on one, the yes. other one you followed instructions. Yes, yes, <laughs> yeah, sorry. Let's, let's start <laughs> with the one that you were insisting <laughs> on first. Um, you know, talking a bit about the, the debating about ROI, does this involve the fact that traditional media is still running? Yes. Um, for example, you have client A, meron na siyang TV, meron yeah. siyang print, yeah. radio, and then he says, mm -hmm. Obviously, what is existing now with my sales, that's my metric of yeah. what these campaigns yeah. are doing. Pag dinagdaga mo pa ng digital, how do they differentiate the two? Is that what's involved here? Because you can't do one or the other. You can't say, okay, stop the TV rage and print this month, only digital and see what happens. Yeah. I mean, in fact, that's why, that's why it's so hard. Because when you look at attribution, it is just so hard to attribute it to digital. Mm -hmm. um, and and, and I, I'm sure some of the examples that were given, right? You always ask that question. And, 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 and I would always, for the past seven years, because that question is always asked, you always want to ask, na, can digital cost increase in sales? And I will tell you now, stop asking that. Because it's, it's, it's almost impossible. How can you track 
that did your ad on TV or on radio or on or newspaper didn't increase in sales, mm -hmm. right? You can. I mean, uh, I don't know if anyone in the world really uh, can did that, that right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But for example, you can stop. You can you can do all out digital. But my my you know my take is that know how what is the role of digital, mass media, right? TV, radio, print has its role. Digital has its role. For example, I'm iffy <coughs> if you tell me, and some people tell me that, they will use digital for awareness. Uh, digital is not good for awareness, <laughs> right? You have the mass media to generate awareness. The, the expertise of digital is for what I term close combat. Mm -hmm. Once they are aware, you, they, you hold them together. That is when you start the engagement and the affinity, right? right? So use that tool when it is at its best. Mm -hmm. So if you want digital to do all the, 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 the four layers of marketing, then it's going to be very hard. You're putting the pressure on, on digital too much. Mm -hmm. So if you're saying digital will, will uh, you want to put the entire responsibility on digital, you won't be successful. Because if you look at the funnel, the awareness pa lang, it won't hit it na eh. So it won't allow conversion. You need mass media to help you there, mm -hmm. right? Generate awareness for that, whatever you're proposing, and then tie it with digital. So in my experience, uh, the, the strongest combo is a, uh, TV digital, TV Facebook, TV website, or or print uh, Facebook. No? So ganon, it has to be, it has to work. You have to use in combination. Right, and I think the key words that uh, I'll pull out of what your your answer there was, it's not just about or it's not all about awareness. Yeah. The key is engagement. Yes. So in essence, are you saying it's humanizing the brand? Yeah. Go ahead, sir. Yes, yes. Uh, hi, I'm Benj from Tribal. Uh, I really like the the discussion regarding the maturity yeah, uh, yeah. stages of the companies. Uh, I'd just like to ask a really general question. Sure. How do you feel about trending on Twitter? And uh, how important do you think it is in terms of okay. uh, the overall strategy for a campaign? Uh, I, I, I don't have any beef. It's always nice to trend on Twitter. The thing is, you don't celebrate with wine Now you trended on Twitter, <laughs> right? And in many cases, even if we judge awards, you know, parang we trended on Twitter, and it's, so, it's supposed to look like it's a Guinness Book of Records, when apparently you only trended for one, at one point in time. And to trend would just, and you can right now, if you still don't know, you can make it trend. There are ways to, to really go and make it trend, right? So for me, if organically it just trended, it's nice, congratulations. I think you created something worthy of buzz, right? But, but again, it has to, in the end, it has to still be, Engagement, it still has to look at, you know, are pe when people are talking about it, uh, are they mostly positive, are they negative, it's mostly positive. How then, then you can push the envelope further. You know? How is the impact to the brand? Are they going to the store later on? Right. Okay. Yes, let's say a question. Hi. Um, on the subject of digital PR, um, is there any indicator for a potential digital PR crisis? Like, how do I know if I'm making a big deal out of nothing or if I'm being proactive and potentially stopping like a viral crisis? Um, okay, we, we if hopefully, and I would assume, Sana, you have a listening tool in place or uh, a listening tool kasi will tell you how many are tweeting or talking about it already. So you need to at least invest. May, meron naman mga free dyan eh, so, so just research. In, in, in my experience kasi, to, 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 um, to trend on, uh, on Twitter, you need around 1,000, 1,500 mentions. You're talking about, just think about the, the just think about a million people march. You're talking about 65,000. Parang, I think, na feel nyo lahat na parang ang ingay, no? That it was very noisy. All of your Facebook pages are at six, are, 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 are all about that. And yet, if you type in, if, I, if you look at Pidaf at Pork Barrel, 60,000 mentions. Right? If you look at Napoles before she was captured, so I did that analysis last Sunday, it was just at 30,000. Mas marami pa nga yung pork barrel eh. So, uh, uh, and, and some of them might trend, but again, when you want to trend to, to the uh, tribal person, uh, it you has to be at around 1,000 at a single point in time. Like within that hour, it, everyone has to be talking about it. So what I always do is, is you look at the number of mentions, and number two, you have to try to look for the originator. Because that originator has to have a certain level of influence. So like what I showed you earlier in Sky Cable, when you analyze it, yung Twitter following at 300, medyo okay pa. If it reaches more than 1,000, I would be scared already. If it reaches 10,000, then I'm very scared, actually, that, that he, is in a, he has enough influence already. No? When, when he tweets, people will actually be responding and, and so many other things. So 
I mean, there's no real benchmark, but, but for me, on the side, look at the influencer uh, as a shortcut. No? Kung less than 100, okay lang. No? But more than that, to 1,000, 10,000, uh, medyo serious na siya. Hi, my name is Karen. For, um, my question is, for a company like ABS-CBN, and you have a lot of employees, practically these are or artists or newscasters. Yes. These are your brand ambassadors. Yes. How do you align them in their tweets? Because these people have emotions, they have their own opinions. How do you align that it won't be hurting your main company or your main brand? Um, yeah, that's a good question. Uh, in, in, in reality, the value of our celebrities and personalities is because when they, why do, why do we have um, some of our celebrities having 5 million followers? They have those because they're authentic. It is a real tweet, right? So the last thing I want when, when I came in is to regulate that, right? So what we do, parang ASC, digital, is post, <laughs> right? You can, we will always train them. We will always teach them how to properly, always know the, the, the dangers, or the repercussions and everything. But the last thing we want is to say, before you tweet, we will have to approve. <laughs> right? Then it doesn't make sense. Then, then they would, people will unfollow. Right? We know they are our biggest assets. And that's why we have to give them that freedom. Right? And that's why they can be authentic. But at the back of their heads, they know the repercussions. Now, okay, ito medyo alanganin. At least, if, if they want to tweet that, they can just check with us. Right? So again, you cannot just regulate everyone. It's hard. And to prove that point, I didn't even know he was hired. Yes. <laughs> okay, I've known him for like six years doing IMAP yeah. every year. I just saw he was here. Yeah. Uh, and to, to add to that, I mean, I'm an anchor who tweets a lot. No? Um, uh, yeah, we yes. are not regulated. Uh, we do have social media guidelines, um, specifically for news anchors. Um, and if ever man na merong, you know, post, eh, merong yes. naging controversial na napag-usapan, there is a committee, I don't know what the name of it, uh, nangyari, may nangyari controversy before between two artistas eh. Forgot, yeah. uh, I don't know if you were there already. Uh, and uh, there were, you know, there were, there was some advice given to them to not air their discussions online amongst each other. Yeah. Parang ganun. Yeah. It's uh, actually the question because it's, it's our personal uh, challenge in the company. We work for YesFM and we have DJs who are yes. very popular. Yes. And so, you're correct. Uh, this is just a comment that you, we want to preserve their authenticity and that's why they gain fans but yeah there's some some post lang that you know needs to be aligned no understand so you have to set that also like uh, what did mm -hmm. said there are guidelines mm -hmm. and it's not it's not really hardcore uh -huh. right you can do this we recommend you don't do this but of course uh kumbaga sa basketball there are fouls <laughs> if i foul we have to regulate you thank you right so i mean you can do that and uh, to add to that yung engagement don yeah. yun, yun din eh, nangyari sa akin honestly i don't i'm not you know, the, the KC Conceptions yeah, or the yeah. Karen Davilas or the, the big artists in the world. But I've gained more than 250,000. I think it's because I'm just myself. Yes. Uh, I engage Agreed. with people. I talk yep. to people. I'm not just yeah. tweeting headlines. I, yep. I, I'm, I'm yep. giving out my opinions once in a while. Yes. Yes. The cronuts I eat. Yep. You know, things yeah. like that. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. All brands, by the way, so walang finavor. I try them all yes. as much as possible. That's why Messi keep to. Um but there, yeah. So just be yourself, and that, that's why I guess I, that's why it, when I when people ask me as well with my experience on social media, just humanize your yes. brand, try to have a human aspect, and it helps like a lot. So, thank you for the question. Thank you. Up there. Up there. Okay. Um, especially for brand digital PR campaigns, there are re I, from what I've heard, there are two schools of thought. Mm -hmm. One um, is whenever you have a new product launch, you usually go with the, the most influential Twitter user or social media okay. personality. Okay. And on the other hand, um, I've heard that um, sometimes to create more meaningful engagements, you go for the communities. So um, in point number one, I'm thinking maybe um, we're patterning um, influencers too much with ATL. Uh, and my question is, for you, based on experience, um, do you think that digital PR is more of a, uh, a better builder of incremental buzz rather than be it being patterned as mainstream buzz driving, uh, a mainstream buzz driving mechanism? Actually, if, if the most successful case we had was really Magnum, <coughs> right? I mean, I mean it, it was Magnum. Um, you get then celebrity tweeters right to just to just tweet about that brand 
right? And that worked well. We've seen also people who just use bloggers who have a few followers, but in, in bigger scale, they mobilize a lot. They have some success, right? So I think, I think there are just a lot of variables that are in play, you know? um, depending on the brand, who you want to target. Um, I'm sure in, on, on, the, on the media side, when, even when you recommend the influencers, now may segmentation, na rin, they have to be the mothers, they have to be the, uh, the, the finance people, among many other things. Na rin, no? But for me, always, if you approach it at that singular level, remember also that, that when Magnum was successful, it was also like they have a lot of stories to tell. Right? So they have this, the big event. They also have, you know, uh, uh, when, when people were following them, ang laking, malaking tulong rin yung, it really helped a lot that they ran out of stock which prompted more people to post um, uh, pictures of empty uh, you know, magnum cases there, right? So again, I'm um, sorry, but there's no, uh, the school of thoughts, that's why they are there. Because in the end, you just have to make your uh, uh, best judgment depending on the objective, right, of, of that brand. But of course, you get influencers who have two, three million fans, that's, that's a lot. I mean, you, you can really create a lot of traction with that. Hi, Donald. Um, I have a question. Yesterday, I, I think most of the people here know, Facebook, after three, four years, has finally opened the wall for promos. Yes. So brands can now run promos yeah. on the Facebook wall. Yeah. Um, in ter as far as engagement and digital PR are concerned, um, any advice on brands that you know would eventually start running promos on the Facebook wall? Okay. Um, if the, the, the thing there, I think, you know, uh, there was a time, past 12 months ago, right? All of us were just doing a lot of apps. And the thing with apps, and we've done so many apps, it's getting harder and harder to play and to engage and to gamify all of them. And therefore, they are losing the engagement. For me, and how I analyze it, I may be wrong, is that number one, remember Facebook stocks and they're under heavy pressure to really deliver, right? And using apps as the tool for brands to engage, right, is not cutting it. So there's already a big decrease. I, don't even, I, I cannot even imagine today that some of you would still do a Facebook campaign with an app execution, right? So mostly, a lot of, of executions are really more on community, creating compelling content and all that, right? So we will see more and more of that. We will, the challenge now is what kind of content you put there, right? Content management, community management becomes key. Now, it's all about how creative can you do, go there rather than just, wag lang sana promo. I, I don't think it will work. Eh? It, it loosens the authenticity of Facebook. Right? You do it once in a while. That's fine. Right? Make them excited. Give a good price. That's fine. But if you're going to do it like Nescafe, dere derecho, it's going to be very hard. They would, oh, so, naging ano ka lang, promo page literally. You lose the, the, the brand love. No? Hi, good afternoon, sir. I'm Candice of Star yeah. Cinema. <laughs> I'd like to ask lang your thoughts um, in terms of the guerrilla viral leaks. Let's say um, there's a video or a photo na, na sa atin talaga official galing, but then we're releasing it like a viral leak, like this blogger leaked this fi uh, photo or a video. Is it, is it a wise move or is it a measurable move actually to, to propagate buzz or awareness? So what you're saying is that you leak your own video and say it's leaked and therefore hopefully you create buzz. Nothing wrong with it, but again, you, you, you risk the authenticity of the brand, right? If someone finds out that it is you who leaked and said you said it's leaked, right? So you can do it maybe once or twice in your life, right? <laughs> if you want to generate buzz, but you can't do it every time, right? So I mean, okay lang. I mean, I won't recommend it, right? No, but, but I mean, but if you want, no, kunare, wala ka na maisip, plug it out there. <laughs> I mean, but I'll approve that, no? I'll pakita mo sa akin mo. <laughs> By the way, wala pong, <laughs> hindi po planted yung mga kapamilya questions. Oh, hindi, hindi. Kahit na parami na sila, I don't know why. Hindi ka sa akin nagpapakita sa office eh. Saan ba kinagkakape sa office eh? Okay, we should have some consultation hours to yes. any department. Okay. Alright, so we saw the sign wrap up. Okay, so if any other questions, he did post his email address. Yeah. The new one. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. At ABS, yes. ano, ano, ano ba yun? Donald underscore Lim. At ABS. Yun. Oh, siya nagsabi na. Alright, so congratulations Thank to you. the new job. Uh, welcome again and a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you guys. To the IMAP founding president and now Kapamilya, Donald Lim. Thank you, Donald. Thank you.